Nowadays on Linux, there are a lot of options for installing software. Some might argue way too many. You obviously have your system repos maintained by your distro developers. You have some form of third-party repos. This is usually very distro dependent. On Arch Linux, we have the AUR. On Fedora, you have things like Copper. On Ubuntu, you have PPAs. But pretty much every package manager allows you to add in arbitrary repo sources. You have various language package managers like the one for Rust, the one for Python, the one for JavaScript. There's flat packs. There's app images, there's snaps. You can install things directly from source, usually using some form of build script, typically in the form of a bash script or a make script. And there are probably others out there, but this is supposed to be an exhaustive list. There's just so many options. How are you supposed to navigate this space? What should you be using? I can't really tell you what you should be using, but I can tell you what I am using. This is in the context of the Linux desktop. Maybe on servers or mobile or other use cases, things have a bit of a different focus, but I can't really speak for those. So we'll start with the most common and then work down from there. The overwhelming majority of packages I install on my system are from my core system repos. Now, obviously, when you first set up your distro, when you first install everything, all of those packages, with the exception of Ubuntu with snaps, all of those packages are going to be from those core system repos. What I mean, though, is the packages I choose to install post installing my distro. And this includes enabling repos that might not be enabled by default, but are still officially maintained by the Arch Linux developers. In my case, that's things like Multilib for access to the 32-bit libraries. Now, on any distro actually worth using, when something is in your core system repos, you can generally expect it, at a bare minimum, to be working. It may not be working optimally, more on that in just a bit, but it is going to fit nicely into your system. It's going to be tested by your distro developers, and in the case of something like a static release with Ubuntu, it is going to be heavily tested to make sure what is shipped on that release actually works on that release. However, if your core system repos handled absolutely everything, there wouldn't need to be this video, and there wouldn't be all of these other options available. There are only so many developers on your distro, and only so many packages can be tested. There are going to be a lot of applications out there that in many cases actually might be popular that are not packaged on your distro, and you can't install them like this. So from there, we move on to the third-party repos. Now, technically, all of the package manager solutions going forward would also have third-party repos, but the way that I'm defining it here is some sort of repo solution, which while you may not necessarily install those packages with your system package manager, the packages from those repos integrate with your system package manager in one way or another. Say with the AUR, for example. When you want to install something from the AUR, you don't do so with Pac-Man. The way you do it is use an AUR helper or go and use make package directly. But by doing so, it generates an Arch Linux package and that package gets integrated with Pac-Man and can then be removed by using Pac-Man. In the case of Ubuntu, PPAs work a little bit differently from regular repos, but you can install those packages directly through apt. And it works more or less the same way in the rest of these third-party repo solutions. And this is generally my go-to on the rare occasions where something isn't available in my core system repos. Do keep in mind that whenever you're doing anything third-party, whether it's these repos or anything going forward, there is a certain level of trust you need to have that the person isn't trying to destroy your system. Generally, you can expect that your distro developers aren't trying to do this. But when it's something, especially in places where it's just a random repo you found on the internet, don't go and install things randomly without doing some level of research, either auditing the packages yourself or seeing what other people are saying. However, even though pretty much anything I could ever want 
is probably going to be packaged on the AUR. Someone has packaged it at some point, even if it has like five stars on GitHub. There are still some cases where I don't go and use that package. There are these weird edge cases where I'll use another method instead. If the developers have a suggested method to install the application, commonly I'm going to go and use that. My best examples for this are Bottles and OBS. Both of these applications are probably going to be available in your core system repos and probably in some third party repo as well. But they don't function optimally in this environment. OBS is missing some features because it doesn't have access to a private API key and Bottles is very particular about dependencies that are available. In these cases, they're both available as a flat pack and I'll use the flat pack instead. One quick thing about OBS, if you happen to be using Ubuntu, you don't have to be using the Flatpak to have an official version. There is also an officially supported PPA as well. Doesn't really matter, both are going to do the same thing, it's just up to what you want to use. Now, this seems to be a bit of a recurring theme. There are cases where I just don't care whatsoever about an officially supported package. One great example of this is with Critter. Now, on Critter's website, they list three official installation methods. Two of them are distro independent. You have an app image made by the Critter developers, you have a community maintained flat pack, and then Gentoo. Why they list Gentoo? I don't know, but they list Gentoo. The app image is the one actually made by the developers though. By everything I've just said, it makes sense to go and use the app image. I don't use that. I use the version from my core system repos. The reason I do that is I don't notice anything wrong with it. If I notice a problem, I would go and use this instead. But it seems to work like it should, so I'm just going to go with the first method. At this point, I've pretty much covered, let's say, 99.9% .9 of the applications I install on my system. From this point forward, it's pretty much just things where I don't really have much of an option on how I can actually do it. So if an application isn't available in my core system repos and isn't available in a third-party repo like the AUR, in that case, I'm going to probably install it as a flat pack. That's going to be my first go-to. There are a lot of applications out there where the flat pack is the only option available. If that isn't available, I'll then try to find an app image. If that's not available, well, then we basically have to move on. Now, the reason why I go with flat pack over app image first basically just comes down to the fact that flat pack actually has a package manager. I can very easily update the flat packs, I can very easily install them, and I don't need to go and just find the new app image on a GitHub somewhere. It's just all working nicely together, and I don't really have to think about it. As for language package managers, here I proceed with a lot of caution. You may or may not notice this, but occasionally your third-party repos and even your core repos will include some language libraries. So if you have something from Python, for example, and you install an application through pip that's using the same library, but using a different version, maybe a fork of it, maybe an older version, maybe a newer version, now you have to override a package being handled by your core system package manager or even being handled by the language package manager itself. And if you go and try to uninstall that library, that can cause some pretty serious problems if one of these package managers are just now suddenly missing it. These tools work really well in an isolated dev environment where you can install as many libraries as you want and it's not going to affect your general system. But when you are using them as a general system package manager, do have a lot of caution over what you're installing. Make sure you pay a lot of attention because even little things may cause some problems and you may have to go and manually intervene to iron out some of the problems you're going to be seeing. And finally is the ultimate fallback, installing the application from source or using some sort of build script. Right now on my system, I have two applications like this 
and I don't plan to ever increase it. Those applications are applications that don't ever really need to be updated either. The development on them is very, very minimal. Those being D menu and ST. Both of these are suckless applications and also happen to be the dev suggested way to install them. These applications are available in my core system repos and are probably available in some third party repo on your distro. The reason why I compile them from source though is because I want to go and make some modifications to the application source code and have them work in the way that I want them to work. This is just the weird suckless way of doing things where rather than having config files and things like that, you instead have to go and patch the source code. Now, technically, you don't really install them, but technically, any of the shell scripts I have that I've downloaded from some GitHub somewhere, I've installed those manually as well. But it's more like just copying the file and just putting it into my path. Some of those actually are available in your repos. I just don't really see any reason for doing that unless it's something really complicated. Now, if you remember that list from the start, you might realize that I didn't actually mention something. And there's a good reason for that. That being snaps. That's because I don't use them on my system. I did in the past, I did some old videos discussing them, but nowadays I just have no interest in adding them to my system. And while there are some concerns over performance, size, things like that, it's not really majorly different compared to Flatpak. My major concern is how absolutely cluttered your system gets with all of these loopback devices. If you go and run something like LSBLK, it is going to be cluttered with garbage on any distro that heavily uses snaps. If you're using Ubuntu, go and run it and just see what happens. Yes, it can be filtered, but I prefer to not have to use that filtering in the first place and a better solution to be used. If flat packs don't need to do that, snaps don't need to as well. I am sure something else can be worked out. So, in those very rare cases where something is only available as a snap, I just won't use it unless I can work out how to compile it from source. But a lot of the time, the reason it's a snap is because it's an absolute nightmare to compile and the user is not going to want to do that. And none of this is to say that this is the only correct way of managing your system. There are plenty of other ways you can do it. You can primarily focus on snaps. You can run everything in DistroBox. Let me know what your approach is on how you install software. So if you like this video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon Scribes Deli Barra Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.